Welcome back to the Living Soil Lab, where we dig deeper into what makes soil thrive. Today we're challenging one of gardening's most repeated pieces of advice, that eggshells are the go-to calcium source for your garden. The truth is far more interesting, and the alternatives we're about to explore will transform how you think about feeding your soil's calcium needs. Why calcium matters beyond the basics, calcium serves as the backbone of plant cellular structure, forming the middle lamella that holds cell walls together. Without adequate calcium, plants develop weak stems, blossom end rot appears on tomatoes and peppers, and fruit quality suffers. But calcium's role extends far beyond plant tissue. In the soil itself, calcium acts as a flocculating agent, helping clay particles bind together into stable aggregates that create pore spaces for air and water movement. Research from the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service shows that adequate calcium levels improve soil structure more than any other single nutrient, creating the physical environment where beneficial organisms can thrive. The microbial community depends on calcium for enzymatic functions and cell wall integrity in bacteria. Calcium balances soil pH without the harsh swings caused by lime, and it helps mobilize other nutrients that would otherwise remain locked in unavailable forms. When calcium levels drop, magnesium and potassium can dominate exchange sites, creating imbalances that cascade through the entire soil food web. Eggshells break down at a glacial pace in garden conditions. The calcium carbonate in eggshells requires significant acid exposure to dissolve, and even when ground into powder, years can pass before meaningful amounts become available to plants. Studies on eggshell decomposition in compost systems show that even after 12 months of active composting, substantial portions remain intact. You know, for gardeners seeking results within a growing season, eggshells simply cannot deliver. The biological communities in your soil need calcium they can access now, not three years from now. Gypsum, or calcium sulfate dihydrate, stands as the most effective mineral calcium source for living soil systems. Unlike lime, which raises pH, Gypsum provides calcium and sulfur while maintaining neutral pH levels. This makes it perfect for gardens where soil pH already sits in the optimal range but calcium remains deficient. Research from Kansas State University demonstrated that gypsum applications improve soil aggregate stability by 40% within a single growing season, creating better drainage in clay soils and improved water retention in sandy conditions. The calcium in gypsum dissolves readily in soil moisture, becoming immediately available to plant roots and soil microbes. The sulfur component provides an additional benefit. It's essential for protein synthesis in plants and supports populations of sulfur-oxidizing bacteria that help break down organic matter. Application rates vary by soil type, but starting with 2 pounds per 100 square feet for clay soils or 1 pound per 100 square feet for sandy soils provides a solid baseline. The key advantage of gypsum lies in its ability to improve calcium levels without disrupting the delicate balance of other nutrients. It won't lock up phosphorus the way lime can and it actually helps remediate sodium-affected soils by displacing sodium from clay particles. For gardens dealing with heavy clay or compaction issues, gypsum provides structural improvement alongside the calcium nutrition. Comfrey plants mine calcium from deep in the subsoil through tap roots that can extend 10 feet down. The plant concentrates this calcium in its leaves along with potassium, phosphorus and trace minerals. When you harvest comfrey leaves and use them as mulch or compost material, you're creating a calcium source that releases through biological decomposition rather than simple dissolution. The advantage of plant-based calcium lies in its integration with carbon compounds and the microbial processing required to release it. As fungi and bacteria break down comfrey tissue, 
They create stable humus that holds nutrients in forms plants can access gradually. Research published in the Journal of Soil Science found that green manures containing high calcium plants increased both calcium availability and microbial biomass compared to mineral amendments alone. Harvest comfrey leaves three to four times per season, cutting just above the crown. Chop the leaves and either spread them as mulch around heavy feeding plants or add them to your compost pile. The leaves break down within four to six weeks in warm conditions, releasing their calcium content into the root zone. For faster action, make comfrey tea by submerging leaves in water for about two weeks then dilute the resulting liquid one part tea to ten parts water before applying to soil. Other calcium accumulating plants include stinging nettle chickweed and dandelion. These weeds often grow abundantly in disturbed areas, mining calcium from deeper soil layers and making it available at the surface through their leaf fall. Wood ash from hardwood trees provides calcium carbonate, along with potassium, phosphorus and micronutrients in a package that enhances soil biology. The alkaline nature of wood ash does raise pH, making it ideal for acidic soils but, you know, requiring caution in neutral to alkaline conditions. So, one pound of wood ash contains roughly the same calcium as about three pounds of lime, but it also brings some additional nutrients that help support microbial populations. The porous structure of ash particles, you know creates habitat for beneficial bacteria, and also improves soil aeration. Studies on biochar and ash applications, well, they show increased populations of nitrogen-fixing bacteria and mycorrhizal fungi in soils that have been treated. Apply wood ash at rates of 5 to 10 pounds per 100 square feet for acidic soils, working it into the top few inches. For established gardens with moderate pH, limit applications to 2 pounds per 100 square feet to avoid over-liming. Never use ash from treated wood, painted materials, or coal, as these contain heavy metals and toxic compounds. Only clean hardwood ash from wood-burning stoves or campfires provides safe, effective calcium. Match your calcium source to your soil conditions and garden goals. Use gypsum for immediate structural improvement and neutral pH calcium delivery. Go ahead and incorporate comfrey and other accumulator plants for biological calcium cycling that, you know, really builds long-term soil health. Apply wood ash strategically in acidic areas, where pH adjustment and calcium supplementation both, uh, benefit your crops. Be sure to test your soil before making large applications and, well, observe how your plants respond over the growing season. You know, strong stems, deep green foliage, and quality fruit development are signs of adequate calcium. On the flip side, if you're seeing blossom end rot tip burn or weak growth, well, those are indicators of a deficiency. Why not transform your calcium approach starting today? It's a great time to make a change. So, here's the deal. Choose one of these three sources and integrate it into your next planning cycle. It's a simple step that can make a big difference. Share your results with the Living Soil Lab community. Subscribe to our channel for more evidence-based soil biology that replaces gardening myths with proven methods. Hit that notification bell and share this guide with gardeners ready to move beyond eggshells. Together we're building healthier soil from the ground up.